Hello, hello. How are you, Josh? Hey, good. How are you? Good, good. Just uh, checking my uh, setup here. Sorry about that. No problem. I want to try sharing my screen. Perfect. Yeah, I got to make some changes here. Okay. Okay, it says I'm not allowed to share my screen. There it go. Oh, let me. I saw your screen there and then it went away. Let me let. There we go. Try that. There we go. Let's see. Let's start the recording. Good evening, everyone. My name is Samuel Joseph. I'm the CEO of the Urban Core Community Coalition. I'd like to welcome you to our second uh, Change Miami campaign uh, community advocacy workshop. <clears throat> Tonight, our theme being the uh, Civic, the Citizen Advocate Academy, um, and we have a great lineup for you this evening. I want to start out first by saying thanks to our folks over at Christie House, who are always wonderful and allow us the opportunity to uh, use their uh, Zoom line and also to uh, bring the community together around these conversations um, as they're a community organization. I wanna thank all the panelists uh, tonight uh, for being here and taking time out of your busy schedules, especially during the pandemic. Um, and I, I, we look forward to learning from you, um, the experts and the insiders, as I've, as I've dubbed you, how to get things done in our community. Um, I just wanna remind folks that the uh, Change Miami campaign workshops are held monthly on the third Thursday of the month um, from Saturday through from September through June. Um, and to check out the schedule of listings coming up and subject matter coming up, please uh, visit our website, uc3miami.org. Um, and before I pass it over to our president, um, since I started it as a tradition at our first meeting, I do have a trivia question for everyone this evening. Um, that I'll answer later. The trivia question this evening is, and this is a quote that um, I want you to finish for me. I want you to tell me who said the quote and um, what's the rest of the quote, because I'm only giving you part of it. Democracy is the worst form of government there is. Let me say it again. Democracy is the worst form of government there is. Who said it? Um, and what's the rest of the quote? You can put it in the chat um, or the Q&A. Um, I'll even come up with a prize for the person who uh, can get the answer. Mm -hmm. But without further ado, I wanna turn it over to our president, Ernesto Cuesta, um, who always gives us a great message to start out with. Uh, Ernesto, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, uh, good afternoon or good evening. Uh, it depends on from which aspect you are looking at uh, the deadline. Uh, uh, time change that we have. So good, good afternoon or good evening is up to you. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's up to how you want to define this time. Uh, regardless, uh, thank you for the panelists. Uh, thank you for everyone that is following us. And, and everybody's asking by now, why uh, change Miami campaign? Well, uh, we came out with this uh, concept because we want to change Miami. And we want to change the way that politics 
traditionally have been run in the city of Miami. Uh, and what we are saying that is because we need more young people to step forward and engage in the political arena. And that's what we are in for. That's why we uh, formed and established this new organization. Honestly, we are tired of seeing the same recycle faces in the political arena. We feel that the young people are not given the chance to run for office. We feel that young people need not only to run for office, but to get engaged in public service. And, you know, I, I got involved in the British Association when I was 30 years old, 1990. I was the youngest of the group. Uh, I had hair as much as, uh, uh, you know, I'm 60, I'm going to be 61 this year, and, and it is time to renew the leadership. Being a good leader means to be a good mentor. And it is time that we, in the politics in the city of Miami, Dade County, South Florida, we change that mentality. Uh, so that's what we are here for. Um, I don't know what else. I can continue talking the whole <laughs> afternoon. I will not do that. Thank you so much, Ernesto. No, look, um, uh, thank you. Uh, we do have a winner, Diane Reeves. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. Winston Churchill. Um, the, the whole quote is, democracy is the worst form of government there is, except for all the rest. Um, I, I, I bring that quote because as Ernesto, as I said, always gives us a good starting message. So you know, the Change Miami campaign started in 2014 as a BHA initiative. It's been on BHA's legislative priorities ever since. Um, we, it led to the creation of the Urban Core Community Coalition in February of 2020. And it really is about getting new and fresh faces into government um, at all levels um, and, and everyone involved in the process. Because as the quote says, yeah, <laughs> we haven't found anything better just yet that works for humanity. So let, why not try to make what we do have work? So um, the other tradition we started at our first event was a creative way of having our panelists introduce themselves. Um, and so we have the panelists' two-minute introductions. We have given the panelists um, some directions around their introductions this evening. Um, we want them to tell you a little bit about themselves and, and why they're participating this evening. But we gave them some specific questions. Um, when and what compelled your interest for community service? Um, what's your preferred method for airing and addressing community issues and the best and worst memory of constituent service or dealing with public servants? So we like to, um, as I am a Haitian male and have the French ideals about me, we are gonna go ladies first. And so I would like to introduce you all right now to Miss Yolanda Abrams, who is a wonderful, wonderful human being who's been critical to uh, getting things done for Brickle and the urban core and Brickle homeowners. And we love her and her boss, uh, Representative Nick Duran, a lot. Yolanda, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. It's uh, great being here. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Oh, great. I was having, sorry for being late. I was having trouble with my uh, AirPods. Um, so, I've always been into community service. Uh, prior to working with Representative Duran, I worked for Chief Judge Joe Farina in uh, the Judicial Circuit 11, which is our courthouse here. Before that, I worked for hospice, which dealt with people who back then, it was a long time ago, only had six months to live. Um, and it mainly, dealt with people who were suffering um, through either cancer or AIDS, um, something like that. And that's really when DTOS uh, started growing and getting bigger. So I've always felt compelled that if I'm going to do a job, um, there has to be some kind of motivation to do it. 
Um, as you know, working for the state, you don't, it's not really for money, it's more for love. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, after the election, I was first working for Representative Duran, just out there volunteering, you know, going door to door, holding up the sign. And so on election night, it was like one of the happiest moments of my life and one of the most and a realization moment that, oh my gosh, things are really going to change. I had never seen this before. And I wanted to get more involved on how I could help people and constituents. And I mean, we've gone through a pandemic. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've gone through a lot. So in having so much of a customer service background, um, I, the representative and I, you know, really believe that I could help here locally. Um, of course, he's always had someone who studied law who could help him up in Tallahassee. Um, and as we know, most of the bills that are written are always twisted a little bit. So mm -hmm. we're not too sure if you're really saying yes to something or if you, they're, they're putting it in a way that you want to say yes, but you should be saying no. Um, as far as constituents, I've, I've had, we've had really good experiences with constituents, I guess, in times of where the whole community and it's almost like the whole state has felt something, uh, Parkland, that was mm -hmm. a huge, yeah. like shock for everyone. Um, what happened in the nation with, um, with what's going on with, uh, I guess, George Floyd and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's been something. And um, people get really riled up. And also, you know, not with this pandemic and your income is no longer coming in. How are you feeding your kids? How are right. you going to pay for rent? Um, it was very gut-wrenching, very heartbreaking. And also very scary because who they wanted to charge and who they had access to was our phones where right. we, they would pick it up. You know, I would pick it up. And it was like at a time where I was like, oh my gosh, I have to start locking the door, especially if the representative is in Tallahassee and it's just me at the office. So those were the most challenging times on how could I really help out the community and you know just have to suck it up and be out there on times where i knew that I had already been threatened on the phone and that people wanted to come into the doors and you know there was a lot of like banging and it's only me there so um, these are the these are the unanticipated um things that uh, us as lay folks we we don't understand um and, and i'm sure you probably didn't even uh, never realized you were going to be part of um, when you originally signed on. Thank you. We're going to hear a little bit more from you in a minute, Yolanda, but I want to Great. bring up our next person. And, and by the way, thank you for your service, most oh, especially. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next, I want to have uh, Giovanni Castro, who is no longer in government, at least not right now, um, <laughs> he does government affairs for Verizon, but I met um, Mr. Castro while he was working for the then commissioner who was wanting to be mayor of uh, Miami as one of his staffers and one of the most efficient of all of his staffers. And if you don't leave with any other idea today, leave with this idea. Yes, it's great to get to know the representative, but definitely get to know one of their best staff members first, because they're going to be your entree to getting anything done and getting that representative to give you the customer service that Yolanda just mentioned. So that being said, Giovanni, the floor is yours. Thank you for doing this this evening. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, Hi everyone, my name is Giovanni Castro. I'm the state and local government affairs manager for Verizon here in Florida. I guess uh, for the first question of why I'm participating today, it's because it's a two way street when it comes to working constituent affairs or even public policy. You're external facing for the office that you work in. And the reason why I'm here today is that 
Ernesto and Samuel treated me with the respect and nuance and understanding and patience with me as being a young guy learning in that role in the mayor's office. And I truly honor them. And if they ever need anything, I'm always happy to participate. Sam just needed to call me and I'm here. And I, to this day, I truly appreciate the way you both treated me in that office. And, you know, we weren't be able to solve every issue, but I always try my best and you both respected that. So thank you so much, first and foremost, for that. Um, so when and what compelled my interest for community and public service? Uh, I, I come from a family where I have two former um, municipal mayors and I, I spent a lot of time, you know, as, as a child working and volunteering on their campaigns, canvassing, being at senior centers. And one thing I've learned about Miami, it, when you leave here, everybody thinks Miamians, we all have the same story, but Miamians, all of our stories are very unique and we all have very different issues or rationales as to why we're here and what we're trying to figure out. And I, I quickly learned that I wanted to be a help for that. When I was attending high school, I interned in the Miami-Dade County Mayor's Office. When you're the lowest rung on the totem pole, sometimes you get some of the most interesting constituent cases. <laughs> Higher staffers kind of want to throw the young guy to, to the most complicated cases just to shield them from, from any bullets. And um, I, I really grew a, a unique appreciation for problem solving and helping people with their issues. I mean, they come up with some bright ideas um, to help you with your member when they ask you like, hey, Joe, what is the street saying? What do our residents want and need? I think that that serves towards policy making and creation. So I really, you know, those, all those combined experiences helped me uh, get to where I am today. Um, and, uh, and I mean, well, two of the things that I spearheaded uh, in the mayor's office were constituent related, the rental assistance program and the uh, children's savings account program. Mm. Um, two issues that, that I immediately saw, because to me, one of the biggest issues in, in greater Miami is, or Miami-Dade, is inequality. I know we try to talk about a lot of different things, but inequality plays a factor in transportation and resiliency at times. The beauty about resiliency is that it means everything. You can be resilient of housing, traffic, and flooding. So um, those were two policy decisions that while I was up and coming, I, I learned that was a necessary tool for residents. And I would say the preferred method for airing and or addressing community issues is get involved locally. Um, I, I read a study a few years ago, the Miami market's the least civically engaged market in the United States. Um, so that's why you kind of sometimes see a lot of the same people in a lot of different commission meetings. Every, every city commission meeting kind of see the same leaders or organizers there I don't know why there's an apprehension, but I think taking more part in your homeowners association, mm -hmm. there's always a me, there's always a rock star like Yolanda that, that a candidate or an elected official is willing to connect you with to help problem solve. And no elected official wants to be known for bad constituent service. So I just think coming together with a clear, concise message, you know, if you're involved with some sort of Brickle, Shenandoah, Westchester homeowners association, um, I think it's important to align yourself, talk to that one person, have a dialogue, take it to the elected official if you need to. They're going to do their best there. And I, I have to say, during my time in Miami, I, has, I had a lot of very late nights at HOAs across the city. And I know you both have seen me there very late. Um, the city staff, like not to just toot the, my previous you know, employer's horn, they were there. The directors were there. The police chiefs were there um, and, and providing reports and listening to dialogue and trying to come up with solutions. So I salute them. I don't see that in all the jurisdictions. So I don't, you know, they're being proactive on it. And I think that opens itself up for residents should do the same for civic engagement for fundamental change. Definitely. Um, Definitely. Um, and, uh, oh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll hear some more from you, Gio. I, I, I love it. This is exactly the kind of, and you heard Ernesto talk with passion about when he, the first opportunity you get, um, and then, and then before you know it, you know, you're taking care of major issues and you thank us, we thank you because um, it, you were I, our eyes and ears um, in the mayor's office to, to make sure that he's to say, hey, mayor, no, they're coming in, BHA's coming in and they've got some things they want to address and he was always prepared and um, we appreciated that. The, um, I want to introduce you all also to Josh Young. Josh is the director of uh, Miami-Dade College's um, Institute for Civic Engagement and Democracy. 
And Josh, I'll have you finish your introduction. Okay, great. Well, well good evening, everyone. Yeah, our department and my, my job at Miami College is really a legacy of Dr. Eduardo Padron, who retired a couple of years ago, but he was such a champion of this idea of uh, the importance of education and preparing students to be informed, engaged citizens. And he just uh, supported our work all these years. And we've accomplished a lot, but it was really because we had him encouraging us and supporting us. And uh, what compelled my interest in public service? My parents were way ahead of their times. They were very involved in the civil rights movement. Uh, they lived in, in an interracial neighborhood in Philadelphia in the 60s where I grew up. Uh, my dad was very involved with the encampment for citizenship. He met Martin Luther King multiple times, Eleanor Roosevelt. My mom interned with Thurgood Marshall. Uh, my mom is almost 90 and she still canvases door to door, writes mm -hmm. letters to all of her local officials. She's my role, she has more energy than I do. She's my, uh, my role model for public service. And uh, I think back in 2018, we had a bunch of students that went to the county commission and uh, spoke about the importance of adding early voting at MDC. Mm -hmm. And they convinced Mayor Jimenez and the county commission to not only make two of our, one of our campuses an early voting site, but two, both North and Kendall. So that was a, a great um, example of an effective way to air public issues. Mm -hmm. And I live in the Brooklyn area, just coincidentally, and also work at the Wilson campus and with all of our campuses, but I'm a huge fan of Eileen Higgins. Mm -hmm. I just see what a tireless worker she is and, and how dedicated she is to, to serve everyone that lives in this district and beyond. I love it. It's always wonderful when you know your uh, local public officials by their first name. Um, and when they ride public transportation and are at the same stores with you and can address those issues um, with you. So I, I, like you, am a believer also in Commissioner Higgins, um, who we've known for a long time. Um, each of you, thank you, by the way, for your introductions and thank you for sharing your stories of how you got in um, to service and community service. Um, and that although all of them are different, they all share one thing um, for me. And that is, you know, that you found that light, that moment where you saw that you're connected into something bigger than just you and yourself. And that by working through that bigger thing and, and those people, that you can affect change, you can make a difference in your community, um, whether it's getting early voting sites um, put up or serving your community during some of the toughest times probably in our history as humanity. So um, thank you, thank you very much for sharing those stories. I hope folks will take those in and remember as parents, we're serving as examples for our kids and how they will become as future citizens and um, that it, no, even if we don't have kids, we're mentoring somebody and somebody's watching it um, and showing them the right example and the right path can make all the difference. I wanted to have Josh um, talk more about the um, uh, Institute for Civic Engagement and particularly a wonderful project they're doing called the Civic Action Scorecard that really can help the average person, you and me, Joe, uh, John Q. Citizen, to learn how to better advocate for ourselves and for our community. So Josh, I'm gonna turn the floor over to you. Great, can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes. All right, super. Well, I'm gonna go very fast because I only have about 10 minutes, but I am so excited to share uh, something that we've been working on the last couple of years at Miami Dade College called the Civic Action Scorecard. The cool thing about it is it's replicable, um, it's easy to use, um, and it's, a, it's starting to go viral at Miami Dade College. We had about a thousand students that were involved this past year, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. And there are a bunch of colleges uh, that are starting to use it, you know, K-12, and thank you for the opportunity to quickly share what it is. So 
again, I'm with Institute for Civic Engagement Democracy. Miami College is one of a handful of, I think around 40 colleges in the country that are Ashoka Changemaker campuses where the goal is to create in everyone a change maker world and give students experiences while they're at our institution to help them become lifelong change makers. And you can see some of the other departments that form the change making infrastructure. And when you think about the mission of Miami College and, and, and higher ed in general, you know, we, we serve as an economic, cultural, and civic leader. So the civic action scorecard, the civic part of our mission is obviously very important because we're preparing students for successful lives personally, professionally, but also as citizens and participants in our democracy. And again, that's a big part of Dr. Bedrone's legacy because that was so important to him. And the framework for the work that we do in my department is uh, something called civic learning and democratic engagement. It's, it's used widely throughout the country, uh, but it basically is how can we give students experiences? How can we be intentional by giving students experiences that prepare them for informed, engaged participation in civic and democratic life, small d, of course, and by helping them develop civic knowledge, skills, mindsets through both learning, but also through practice by applying these things through service and, and other opportunities. And then, so why, before we talk about the scorecard, let's talk about why this is needed. You know, think of the typical Miami Dade College student or the, the young people in most of the public high schools in Miami Dade County. There's a huge, huge civic engagement gap. It's, it's clear, it's backed by data. It's, it's like the gap in math or the achievement gap. And we know that poor and ethnic minority and immigrant students receive fewer opportunities to interact with public officials, to participate in civic life. And the opportunities that they do have tend to be less frequent and poor quality than more affluent white students. So it's a big need at Miami Dade College and throughout South Florida. So civic learning and civic engagement is much more than just doing hours of service, right? So we're all familiar with young people or, or do, do service hours and they keep track of those hours. <clears throat> but what, what's uh, knowledge, skills, uh, and experiences and mindsets do students need beyond just doing hours of service? How can we foster informed, engaged participation beyond what we all know is, is just going out and doing some volunteer work? So that's why we came up with the civic action scorecard. And basically students take actions, they score points and they can earn awards. So we have a list of 75 civic actions across six broad categories. Uh, it's equitable because anyone can do these actions, a citizen, a non-citizen, a young person, a faculty, a staff, a community member. It's accessible because as you'll see, most of the actions can be done whenever you want from home, uh, on your own time. And basically you do the action, you have to document it, you complete a reflection assignment and you can earn points. And students or anyone who wants to earn the award creates a portfolio to demonstrate that they've completed actions and documented that and, and done reflection. So when they accumulate points, they can earn the award. So we have professors from, from all disciplines, all everything from respiratory therapy to English, to social science, to nursing, uh, who are using the scorecard. MDC has a bunch of learning outcomes like critical thinking and communication and personal and civic and social responsibility. So the scorecard um, can be used to enhance student learning of core learning outcomes. So some instructors are assigning specific items uh, or instructors are also adapting it. And then we also have a lot of just students who are just earning on their own like student leaders, students that just want to um, improve their portfolios and become more um, prepared for success. So it can be done through the classroom or outside of the classroom, or if you have a student club or organization. And there's six categories for civic action. You can see them there on your screen. <clears throat> Democratic engagement. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you uh, the actual scorecard bunch of activities that fall under environment and sustainability, and others community well-being, arts and culture, social innovation. And then the sixth category 
is create your own civic action. And that, that's been very popular too. And it's, it's awesome because students get really get into it and they come up with their own ideas of things that they can do to be civically engaged. So again, there are three steps. You do the action, you document it, and you answer some reflection questions. Okay, and then score points. So here are some examples. Um, this is democratic engagement. Item number one, register vote or show proof that your registration is up to date. And you can see the three steps. They have to document it. They have to answer a reflection question. And then we also give them a, links to resources. Help someone register vote. So, so let's say that you're not a, a citizen, you can't vote, you still can help someone else. And you can, if you help two people, you earn five points, you, you can do it two times and earn 10 points. So you take a photo with the person you help register answer the reflection question and put it in your portfolio. Here's an example under environment and sustainability. Know the native plants of your community. Again, the three steps, documentation, reflection, we have resources and links and you can earn five points. Now, give me one second. I'm gonna see if I can share, I'm gonna stop sharing and then I'm gonna come back. I just wanna show you the actual scorecard. Okay. Is, is, is that just probably too yep. small? Should I try to make it a little bit bigger? Let me just make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So this is just a tracking sheet. I, I, if I have time, I'll show you the booklet, but take a look at, this is democratic engagement. We have 27 items. I don't know if you're able to see those. Mm -hmm. uh, so find one on there that, that you've done. If, if we have more time, the way I usually do it is I give people a few minutes, they open up this and they they identify how many points they would have earned in the last 12 months. We don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. But has anybody written a letter? Let me see, so number, uh, write number DE21, write op-ed or letter to the editor. If written and sent five points, it gets published, you earn 10 points. Um, yeah. Take a practice, DE27, take practice citizenship exam with a passing score of five points. And again, in the booklet that goes along with this, it has the reflection questions, it has the links. Let me, let's go down and take a look at some of the environment and sustainability ones. Review the UN, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, complete the UN Sustainable Communities Checklist, calculate your carbon footprint, watch two videos from the story of stuff. So for each of these, you're earning points. Community well-being, complete a significant act of kindness. You can do that up to three times and earn 15 points. And again, there are guidelines on what that means. Fundraise over $50 for a nonprofit. Serve with a local or state nonprofit. Donate blood. Have a deliberative dialogue. Host a neighborhood or community meeting. Arts and culture, watch a film or documentary. And we, we give examples. It has to be a, has a, have a civic focus, uh, visit a state park museum, attend or participate in a local arts or cultural fair or festival. And then you can see some, uh, the last category is social innovation. And no, the last not. two, PY1, PY2, propose your own civic action. And we work with them to come up with the value of that. Now, Josh, is this used um, in, in in classes? Do, are certain professors using this? Um, is this voluntary, the scorecard? How, how does it work with the students? And how can a layperson like me get access to it? Yep. Great question. So anyone, so for example, Maide Martinez, you know, she works uh, with the Keep This Game Foundation. She has an effort to get high school students more civically engaged. I, I'm talking to her about creating a version of this for high school students. Um, you know, really, it's, it's a fair amount of work, right? To, to do these actions, mm -hmm. to document it, to create a portfolio, and also answer the reflection question. So it's very appropriate for our students, right? Who are trying to um, become better prepared to transfer to other institutions, to mm -hmm. put on their resume, their portfolio. Um, but staff, faculty, anyone can, can do the portfolio. But I really think it's, it's good for young people that are in, in clubs, organizations, leadership programs. 
Excellent. And we have three levels, 100 points is bronze, silver is 200, gold is 300. And they get a pin, they get a, a letter of commendation. My goal is to get a letter from Mayor Levine Cava. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to her staff yet, but I think that she might be willing to do that. And my email is very simple, jyoung at mgc.edu. And I'm gonna stop sharing. So anyway, I'm, I'm really excited about it. And so it's a work in progress. I didn't show you, we have some beautiful booklets um, that were divine, des designed by graphic designers. And Excellent. Um, this thing has oh. so much potential. Like Excellent. I'm hoping tens of thousands of students in the coming years use it at MDC. Well, and, and I, I make share it. Like, it, yeah. I make you a pledge with, uh, with UCCC and BHA, we certainly will help promote it amongst our contacts and you know we talk a lot with the school district uh, i think especially for our high schools and our middle schools this is a great place to start um early with our kids around civic engagement um and and certainly See, one I, thing I, I didn't mention we, we got a creative commons license which means anyone can take this and use it however they want as long as they don't try to sell it and make money excellent right? so they could just take the concept and tweak all the questions, make their own change of reflection. I, um, uh, Josh has shared with me the scorecard. I will have um, the scorecard and also I think a sample of the booklet up on the UCCC website um, as soon as tomorrow. So folks can sample that um, and you can access that website at uc3miami.org. Um, I want to go right into the panel discussion because all of you really gave good examples of what folks need to know in order to really be prepared to go and advocate for themselves and or their community with public servants. But what I really the what I really want to delve into now in our discussion is, you know, who you should know and how do you approach. Um, because uh, having done this for so long, I know that the way you approach and who you approach makes all the difference. So let's start with uh, Giovanni, who's been um, with a lot of the movers and shakers. What suggestions do you give folks in terms of who do you approach first? Um, and then how do you make that approach so that it's effective? Well, I think always with kindness and respect. Um, you know, if, if it's a constituent issue, specifically for your neighborhood, I, I know that street closures in certain areas is a sensitive subject, but if you're there, you know, tr trying to, you know, have your opinion heard, a lot of the members in the front office or constituent services, they've had long days where government employees or unclassified employees. It's not like we have overtime compensation or some sort of can just take vacation when we want. They, they're working long hours as well. So I think respect and kindness is important and clarity in your message. Um, a, a lot of times, um, you know, some constituents are just angry about something. Mm -hmm. they serve as kind of, a, you know, a therapist to a certain degree to have, hey, like I'm here to listen to your issue, but let's get to the meat and potatoes is what exactly is wrong with this initiative, this closure? Why don't you like it? You're telling me why your neighborhood or why it's bad for them, but why don't you like it? And, and what what do you recommend we do? Mm -hmm. So we can be in the middle. I, and as far as, you know, movers and shakers and things, and people you need to get to know, I mean, if it's a public works issue on your street, there are many engineers and planners that you can work with there that, that the city staff or an elected official is willing to, you know, connect you with. I think the beauty of having so many municipalities within one county is you can knock on the door of those city halls and get direct access. Um, you know, to their credit, they are fairly responsive. I, you know, I, I think a lot of us that have worked in constituent services get dinged uh, by by, our, by residents that say, "Hey, you're not responsive it's enough." It's it's not that we don't want to. It's just we're, when you're filling up and doing so many cases at once that it takes a little bit of time. Or if it's not necessarily a city issue, we don't want to just tell you hey, it's not a city issue, we're sending you to the county or whatever. We're trying to have a dialogue with the county and kind of handhold you to help land the plane on, on whatever uh, issue you're having. So I think for long-term prospects, for if it's legislation you're trying to get passed or just a neighborhood issue, 
building rapport with that key person through kindness and respect and clarity in your messaging is so important. And I think you two are kind of models when it comes to that to a certain degree. So, you know, that's why, you know. I appreciate that. And, and I, I, I'm I, here. I will take the compliment. No, and I, and I think you said something really important, um, which I always try to drive home to folks. Again, um, yes, introduce yourself to the movers and shakers, but the folks who really get the work done um, and the folks who really follow through to make sure that the work gets done are at the staff level. Um, and, and the closer the staff to the mover and shaker, the better off you're going to be in getting things done. Yolanda, um, talk to us a little bit more about, because you, you've heard this recently, um, and you, you mentioned it, customer service. How do you maintain customer service when they're just going off on you because we're just mad. <laughs> I mean, you have to have some kind of understanding. Um, it's an issue for them and it's a personal issue for them. Um, so, I mean, you have to be sympathetic. If you're not, or you believe that you're at a higher level than whoever you're speaking to, then you shouldn't have gone into this because really we work for you guys our representatives work for you guys. They don't get reelected if they don't do their job. So I never went to an HOA meeting. And once I started working with the representative, I had to go to all the HOA meetings. And there's so much power in going to an HOA meeting. You have everyone there. You have all your commissioners, you have your state representatives, you have your chief of, or uh, commanders of uh, the police department there. And not only that, while you're going there, there's somebody documenting what you said and what whoever's response was. So you have backup and you have a community who's behind you. So you may have an issue and somebody three blocks down that you never heard of or heard from before also has the issue. And really that starts the connection and we, everyone always gives out their phone numbers. Everyone always gives out their email addresses. And the best way is really via email because you have something documented and you could always follow up. If I don't do my job, which the representative is basically, you have 24 hours to get back to everybody who has contacted you. Even if it's, I got your email, I'm sorry, I haven't gotten to you yet, but you are on my list. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, you have document and ask if I don't do it and, or you're not happy, you can go up to the representative, you know, and email him, but it's always charted. It's always logged. So customer service definitely is part of the job. And if they're not good, it's going to reflect bad on whoever they are serving and whoever they are working for. And that person's not going to want that person in their staff if they're not making them look good. Amen. Look, um, and I, I, I just wanted to stress it because, I, and I knew the word would come, the words would come up. Customer service is not just for the business world. Um, it, we are the customer. The voter is the customer. And, and you said something really important. They work for us. The representative works for the voters that put him in office. Um, and it goes even beyond that because once you get into office, you have to serve all the constituents, even if they didn't vote for you. Um, so uh, I, I thank you for helping us appreciate understanding the hierarchy and how you can best serve um, and, and, and serve the customers who put you there. Josh, one of the issues we have here in South Florida, especially with engagement, is we have a lot of people from a lot of different places that came from governments that were very, very different. My parents were born in Haiti. You did not go and pick your president. You did not go and pick your government when they were born there. They came here to a new country that had all these new rules, and it was exciting but they weren't sure if those rules were okay for them because they were new immigrants. They weren't sure they were wealthy enough to vote. They weren't sure they lived in the right neighborhoods to vote. What can we do to educate, better educate folks in our multicultural community 
to understand how to be better citizens of this country. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a challenge everyone, but especially here with, with students coming from so many countries where their vote doesn't count and, the, and, and politics is just a huge disaster and mess. But I, I think education has a big, big role to play in this K-12 and higher ed. And, and I know former Governor Graham is always talking about and always fighting for more civic education. And he's had some success in the K-12 system, but our, most students never take an academic service learning class, never learn about local government, local politics, uh, never participate in something like the Civic Action Scorecard. And one thing that I've, I've learned, I've been at MDC for 26 years, and I, I always knew that teachers play an important role, but I, I've just come to really admire professors who take whatever they're teaching and put up a, a civic lens on it mm -hmm. and, and help students see whatever it is I'm studying, I need to take what I'm learning and use it to make a difference in the world. It's mm -hmm. not only about myself being success, successful, you know, I have an obligation for others. And, and I see amazing examples of that uh, with, with professors in all kinds of courses integrating civic learning and, and service and, and democratic engagement. So for example, Engage Miami is a local nonprofit, mm -hmm. does great work. They have a 305 civics program. And it's all about helping students learn the basics of how local government works. And I think students, no matter where they're from, once they start getting that basic information, they have some opportunities to interact with elected officials and their staff, they start to change and become more involved and, and informed and change their attitudes about and understand why we can't opt out. We have to be, if, if, we, if we opt out, which a lot of young people do, then we're letting other people make the decisions for us that often are not in our best interest. De definitely. Um, look, I, I live in the city of Coral Gables um, and I'm happy that we had an increase in um, our election turnout from, I believe it was 21% to 28%. But as I said, even then, 28% of the people should not be making the decision for everyone. We've got to get more people involved in the process um, at every level. Josh, you mentioned something very, that's near and dear and passionate to my heart, which is civics education, which is almost um, uh, like the dinosaurs dead um, in our public education, private education, just education system as a whole. I, I, I applaud what's going on with Miami-Dade College and, uh, and, and everywhere else. But to me, in, unless civic education is mandatory, um, we, we're in for a lot of troubles. Giovanni, um, I, the ironic part is that politicians love children and they're really good with them. Um, you know, when Francis Suarez, Mayor Suarez walks into a room with kids, um, it, he melts the room and they all want to be him, but they don't get a chance to learn how to actually get the skills to get there. What can we do? What could government do to help the schools learn that this is important, that we've got to get it back in the classrooms? Um, and get mayors and staff like you guys out before children, teaching them about how to be better citizens. I, I think you kind of <laughs> answered it towards the end there. I think getting staff engaged uh, with certain schools is important. Um, you know, all politics is local. Uh, you know, having people like myself and Yolanda share our experiences with young up and comers of what you know, civic engagement looks like once you're inside, you know, the elected officials office or a city department, I think is very important because some people don't have any idea that they live in, an, in, in a city that isn't incorporated or they have a certain city mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important to differentiate between the county and city powers. Mm -hmm. Important for, for students to understand the powers of home rule and what can or can't be uh, preempted at a state level. I think that's that's, those are all very important things. I, I studied international business and finance in college. I didn't do poli science. So a lot of my political knowledge was just 
because I'd worked in it for such a long time. Mm -hmm. I think if you want to get more people interested in the process, um, it's important to educate them. I think having staff do it, it, it would be fine. Elected official staff. I think that would be great. Everybody loves to tell their own stories. Um, but, you know, we talk about more engagement, but the beauty in it is I don't think that there's there, there's that many politicians in Florida that are very similar. I, I like <laughs> shapes, sizes, and ages. You're right. I, I, it's, I, not I like it. it's not it's everybody. It's not everybody that could take over that room. Well, yeah. it, it, here's actually, let's follow up on this, Giovanni. You're now in the corporate world um, and, and, and still maintaining your government ties. And I know the corporate world is now is taking up more responsibility around um, understanding that that's part of their role also is helping to build a better um, a community and a better electorate and a smarter and more informed electorate. Um, one of the things we're looking at in Coral Gables is partnering public private partnerships to add enrichment into schools, things that they don't have right now that they need like high quality after school programming in STEM, but also civic engagement and civics again as subject matter. Do you see your company um, and similar minded, like-minded companies being interested in efforts like that? Uh, I think the last week in uh, news stories when it comes to uh, voter rights bills and you see corporations taking a step uh, in either signing or not signing pledges of support towards elected officials within the last year, you've seen the private sector take a uh, much larger stance on social issues, I feel like now more than we've seen it in, in quite a while, if I'm not mistaken, but um, I, I think that uh, the private sector, I, I won't I won't speak on behalf of my company, but I think just in general, the private sector is is dipping its toe a bit more into social issues. Uh, I think you're, you're seeing that. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but you're definitely seeing more of it. And I don't think that that will change in the future. I, I, I think you're right. And look, um, everything comes down to funding. And I, I think the role certainly that they can play and make a difference in is uh, bridging that gap that we cannot seem to do in the public. Um, and then uh, Yolanda, in terms of Tallahassee and really looking at um, future legislation around mandating civics programming in school, um, is, is there anything on the horizon? Um, uh, certainly we would back the representative if he were um, into any effort of that nature. Well, the good thing about the representative and the good thing about, I, I think our district is that we are all very closely tied. So, you know, we know the superintendent, mm -hmm. we know what they want. We speak to um, the intergovernmental affairs mm -hmm. for um, Miami-Dade uh, public schools. And you know, they give us a list before we go to Tallahassee of what they want, what they're trying to get. And we fight for that. Unfortunately, it has been a brutal session. Mm -hmm. um, everything that we've tried to do or everything, you know, that it just doesn't seem like it's moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, we do better now in appropriations and getting money to the uh, municipalities, then we are funding our own educational system, and it's a shame. No, it is. And the yeah. representative, I mean, his his mom was a teacher, so he knows. Oh, I know he knows very well, and it pains him. Look, um, I, and I'm going to go on my own little mini soapbox for a minute. Um, civics education has never become more critical to me for this country than after January 6th. January 6th doesn't happen. An insurrection on our government doesn't happen if we have informed and engaged citizens. We do not have that. What we have are uninformed, very barely engaged, and when they are, unfortunately, the actions don't take the smart tone that they should because they don't have the right information. And it starts from day one. 
if our kids don't even know the difference between county and city government or who is serving when, um, that's a problem. And it is a problem we need to solve immediately. Democracy is an experiment. This is an experiment. It's never really been successfully done in humankind. We're right now trying to buck the trend. The only way to do that is to build good citizens. Um, let me see if I have any other questions uh, from folks. I don't see any other questions. What I would love to do is before we wrap up, is to just uh, uh, have you guys any closing statements that you have about you know engagement, participation, and and getting freshness in the process. I'd love or advice that you could give folks so that they could again be the best advocates and citizens that they can be. I'd appreciate it. Let's start with uh, Josh. Well, I mentioned the influence of my parents earlier, but. I and mean, my mom encouraged me to join the Peace Corps. So I, I had never been outside the US and I went to Mali, West Africa and served there. And then I went to South America and served. And that really opened my eyes to how most of the world lives and made me feel like a citizen of the world. It made me appreciate and be more critical of what's going on in this country. So I think the opportunity to travel internationally, especially to developing countries is also is always a, a great lesson in life and and, and and recognizing how privileged we are here and amen with with privilege comes you know uh, responsibility to, <laughs> yeah to try and make things better as well thank you josh uh yolanda Can you repeat the question? I was actually answering. I just, the just any, just any advice that you have for folks about, you know, again, it, engaging uh, you all at their best and meeting success. Because we do, when when you meet the right people and you engage them the right way, you succeed. And we have with Yolanda and the representative, and when Gio was with uh, the mayor. It's because of them we succeeded. So give them some pointers on how to, to succeed. <laughs> I think this district is really lucky because um, at one point our office was right next to Senator Rodriguez's office with Commissioner Higgins right above us. So we were a mini um, city hall and we're very close in touch with commissioners on the county and in the city, very close in touch with um, the mayor, um, city and county. And if there's an, if we all go to the same meetings, we all swap the same cards. <laughs> so um, find any one of us and you have a direct access to finding problems and issues. I've had plenty of calls from the mayor's office uh, that they have constituents for DEO and they, they know where to go. So you really have a great um, opportunity here to reach out to any one of us and the chances of you at least getting an answer whether it's one that you like or one that you don't uh, your issue will be resolved one way or another and it's just really contacting the lowest part of the staff like i am the lowest part of the staff that you can get but <laughs> it's a staff of three including the representatives so really you're right up there and you know, just get in touch with one of us, and we can find it, it uh, the find some find you help, and just continue with us. And that's how we build up a rapport. You'll see us at all the HOA meetings during COVID. I mean, we've been really lucky that you know, like I said, everybody has everyone else's cell phone number. Everyone's held accountable, and nobody wants their office to look bad. I love it. Um, he guys, before we go, um, I and we'll put this list up on the UCCC website, but there will be a, a list of the public servants who serve the urban core at every level city of Miami, Miami Dade County Public Schools, Miami Dade County Board of County Commissioners, the state of Florida, and the U.S. government, so that you know who is representing us and who to call on and where we know their best staff people, we're going to put that, those names there for you also. Um, I want to thank 
our panelists who, again, uh, powerhouse panel. It, it, it's always makes my work real easy when I have really good people. I want to thank you. But before we go, I want to let Ernesto, our president, give us some closing thoughts. Um, and then I'll wrap it up. Ernesto? Yeah, I, I, I want to add that um, uh, education is the key to form a human being a better citizen. And as George said, I stated before, uh, civic life starts at home with the family. Education starts at home. Mm -hmm. It's not all deposited in the hands of the public um, schools or private school. Everything starts at home. And the one, we don't realize that we're going to uh, you know, continue having challenges. No mistakes, challenges. Uh, but I think George mentioned a name, uh, Bob Graham. <laughs> nowadays, nowadays, we don't find calibers of that type of a politician in our political arena right now. We don't. And I believe that we are failing again, and that's why we established this organization, the Urban Core Community Coalition, to motivate young people to participate in the political arena. Uh, example of that, uh, you know, I'm very transparent whether some people like it or not. By the way, our organizations are not party lines. <laughs> you know, even though we, we are affiliated to one party or the other, but we, we have no party lines. But I am, I am who I am. I, I, I speak out my mind. Uh, if, if in 2018, okay, the Democratic Party would have supported former Senator Jose Javier Rodriguez, today, today, he would have been the congressman for District 27. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it is what it is, okay? Our party, both major parties, they have to start supporting uh, young, um, young subjects, uh, young uh, in individuals that they are willing to serve. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that both parties are failing in doing that. In my personal opinion, what I had seen. Uh, I'm not biased, but sometimes I have to be biased. Uh, <laughs> people that I like, I don't like, uh, which is fine, it's normal. But if I would have been asked nowadays, who I like as an electoral young person in the, in the state of Florida, South Florida, in our district, I have to go along with uh, our representative, Dick, uh, uh, Nick Duran. I think that he's a great asset a great uh, exponential of uh, the youth in our community. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that he can even go to Congress and maybe Senate, you never know. I think that he, he's a promising star. And I'm saying that because these are the people mm -hmm. that we need to support. Yep. The people that we need to, you know, uh, nurture them, um, appreciate them, Another thing, um, as uh, Giovanni mentioned, as Yolanda, the people behind the scenes, the people that works for uh, our elected officials, we have to give them credit for that. Example of that, uh, the team uh, uh, behind uh, Commissioner Elin Higgins. Uh, currently, I don't see a better staff behind any elected politician here in Dade County as the best staff as the one for Commissioner Higgins. Superb, I said that before, I said it today, and I will say it tomorrow. Professional and you name it. And the staff from uh, um, uh, Nick, D, uh, Nick Duran. Uh, I mean, Yolanda is very engaged with the community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she also misses uh, a meeting. Even, and, and there are three people. So they really make a big difference. So anyway, there is a lot of work to be done. It is doable, but apathy is an enemy. Yes. And that's what we have to fight. Yep. And don't take enough for an answer. Mm -hmm. So uh, guys I, and, and ladies, um, I thank you for your participation. And um, let's change Miami. Definitely. Let's change Miami. It thank is, you so much. It is, it is time, it's long overdue. Um, and we've got good people coming through the pipeline. Um, good mentors out there who can make a difference um, and build the talent of tomorrow. Um, thank you, everybody. I, I look forward to seeing you in May. Our next one it will be May 20th. 
Um, it's going to be a little bit different format. I'm still working on the uh, content right now, but I'll, we'll get that out. But it's probably going to be a public um, servants meet and greet. Um, we've got a lot of new talent, um, both uh, in Tallahassee and in Washington, and hopefully we can get a chance to meet them. The recording of this meeting will be made available on um, both the UCCC website and our YouTube channel as of next week. Um, and again, panelists, you are all the absolute best. Thank you for what you do for the community and thank you for your service. Um, and I appreciate all of the folks who attended this evening, uh, the event. Have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everybody. Thank Great you. Great job. Great.